The Deputy Minister of Social Development, Henrietta Bukhopani Zulu, in partnership with the South African National AIDS Council Standard Men's Sector, Takuwani Rime Men and Boys Championing Change, hosted a men's dialogue webinar on Father's Day. Gender-based violence has been one of the challenges faced by society during the COVID-19 lockdown. This has highlighted a lack of services to men as both victims and perpetrators of gender-based violence. The webinar sought to facilitate discussions and also to consolidate a response by men and boys to take a stand against gender-based violence and femicide. For more now on the story, let us speak to the Social Development Deputy Minister Henrietta Bukhopani Zolo. We also have Professor Ambule Lojasi, who is the Senex Men's Sector Secretary General. Good afternoon to both of you, DM and Prof. Thank you so much for joining us here on the CBC News Channel. Thank you very uh, much, Vanessa, for having And thank you for having me. Thank you so much indeed for coming through. So I'll start with you, uh, Deputy Minister. We, we've had you before here on the show, really talking about these issues. Uh, you work very closely with men. You've also facilitated at some point men's parliament. So one could actually argue that the discussions that uh, you've heard uh, this morning have been had before, but the status quo remains unchanged. That's very true, uh, Palisa. Change is very painful. Change is a journey. Um, Kastwana barese sinuang kamulo mus sante siluki siwe kamulo. We we striving as the Department of Social Development to actually force men to change, invest in our boys to have a better outcome of men in the future. And today was no different. We create. We took an opportunity for Father's Day to actually remind men that responsible fathers. Uh, respect women, responsible fathers respect their children, and responsible fathers will never sleep with uh, and rape uh, uh, children younger than uh, their own daughters. So what is important for us is that we continue the dialogue. The status quo remains, the brutality is getting increased, uh, Palisa. Mm. It's not like the status quo remains, it's just getting worse. Yeah. Now what we are establishing is, is that we, we have two scenarios and uh, that makes us to soldier on and remain committed. The first one is the reporting is increasing. That means we are doing something right. Secondly is that the silence is being broken. More and more cases are coming to the fore. The media is covering more and more cases. The painful thing though is that the brutality is becoming unbearable. Mm -hmm. And the unhumanness that it happens, and the fact that women have no homes, they have nowhere to run to, um, also says to ourselves, and that makes us to shoulder on, soldier on is, we need to increase our shelter spaces, but we also need to change the narrative that says, as we take women and children to the shelters, maybe it's about time we do what is in the Domestic Violence Act, the abuser is the one that must get out. But it also comes back to Department of Social Development, yes, when you get the abuser, if you're not getting them to jail, where are you getting them? So either way, we mm. still need the sheltering system All right. to actually function. All right, so we'll, we'll talk to some of the programs that your department has to address this issue of gender-based violence during the lockdown period. But I just want to come to you, Prof. Share with us the, the discussions uh, that were heard uh, this afternoon during this webinar. What, what are men saying? What conversations um, should be heard? Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, this is not the first time we, we, we have been meeting. Uh, we had meetings before, meeting in communities, but we always feel that it's important that we always regroup at, at, and come together at this level where we remind each other, where we review what we are doing, and if we are failing South Africa, uh, we must come up with different strategies. For instance, this afternoon, uh, most men were saying, let us de decentralize this campaign. Let us go to communities. And we've already started that. We, for instance, in all 52 districts, um, our municipal mayors and speakers are leading uh, dialogues, men's dialogues in, at district level. So there is something going on. But men today were saying, also, whilst you are busy talking, let us translate that to action. Let us really go uh, even at a um, uh, 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 community level. For instance, there is an example that if somebody is raped in Cape Town, why are we marching to Pretoria? 
or why are we marching to parliament? Can we march to that area where this whole thing is happening? So there, is, there are some recommendations that came uh, 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 came forward today, mm -hmm. and you are very much sure that in partnership with government, we'll make sure that we implement those. And also, um, there are men who are coming forward, like Patrick Shai. I'm, not, I'm sure it's not the first time, but yeah. he kept on coming forward to say, I did it. I apologize. I'm a changed man. And I, and I think that it's high time that society also support men who are really in, uh, uh, willing to come forward and report that I've been doing this, I've been abusing my mm. partner, and I need help. Yeah. So society must be that environment. And I think it's important, uh, Prof, that you mention in the fact that you need to uh, penetrate and go down to the districts and the municipal levels because a lot of people were saying that these conversations are being heard on a higher level but they're not coming down to people and the fear is that the message may be missed by the targeted audiences, people who are uh, abusive to their partners, perpetrators of gender-based violence may not be getting these messages. So it, it's a good thing that you're saying that you need to lower down the messages and take them, to, to take them down to municipalities. And remember the reason why we are having these dialogues with deputy ministers, uh, even the deputy president of South Africa. Remember, we are always complaining about a political will, that politicians are not there, and we are trying to bring politicians uh, in one room with us. Because in the process of implementing these campaigns, we must also uh, influence policy. And, and that's the duty of South African National AIDS Council uh, to advise government in terms of policy. And what we both. That is why now we are saying to municipalities, also municipalities must not only focus on water, sanitation and electricity. Gender-based violence must be part of the service delivery. Mayors and councillors must go to communities door to door and take uh, uh, those women who are not able to report time uh, mm -hmm. because uh, the perpetrators are bad, uh, breadwinners. So that we're doing all. And, and, and it's important to mention that this national dialogue and national men's parliament is not the only machinery. We have a number of organizations implementing on the ground. But what we need to do now is to stop competition is to work to, uh, and, and ensure that we work together and stop all these insults of calling each other names and all those things. Because calling each other names won't, won't, support, won't help anything, but it will continue to uh, provoke anger mm -hmm. in societies. We need to deal with criminals. And also, I mentioned that last time, that when we are dealing with criminals, we, you can't deal with criminals via summits and, and conferences. But of course, at some point, we need to come together and revive each other, empower each other, and, what, and that's what we're trying to do now. All right, so let me just go back to you, Deputy Minister. Talk to us about the programs that your department uh, has in terms of addressing gender-based violence, more so during this lockdown period. And perhaps also touch a bit on the Solidarity Fund that has donated 17 million rand to gender-based uh, uh, gender violence organizations. How will this bring about change? Thank you very much, uh, Palisa. Uh, firstly, let me say we have the command center, the 0800-428-428 number, which is zero rated, that we continue to say South Africa reach out to this number. That has a please call me, that has um, an SMS line. And to say during lockdown, um, the total calls we received, Palisa, it's 56,671, uh, just during April and May. And you, you that is like a country in a total state of disaster. Mm. So it literally says to us, I think we're becoming polite. Uh, Gender-based violence is no longer a pandemic. I feel it's genocide now. It's gone beyond a pandemic because it's something, despite the many programs that we are having. Department of Social Development runs a lot of programs. The um, Family Matters program where we do provide counseling and actually reach out to families in distress, families in need, and it has the big element of gender-based violence. Um, the issue around positive parenting, where we also try and assist women to actually raise not angry boys, but actually find a way of, as a single parent, how do you actually 
and make sure that your children are going to be able to be better human beings despite whatever frustrations and challenges that you have. Um, we have, including men who raise children by themselves are included. Then we've got the Men and Boys Champion in Change program, which is the one that uh, we had the webinar with today, where we're trying to support men in all facets, whether as perpetrators, rehabilitated, as those in need of care and support. Um, we're also having a program that we have for children uh, Palisa, because we, 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 we have Chomi that targets 10 to 14 year old. We've got YOLO, you only live once. Whether it's look after yourself, don't get covered. Look, when that, those are behavioral change programs that we are looking at securing South Africa's future. We also have our programs uh, that we are starting at Early Childhood Development, uh, where we're starting at, with children from three years old to highlight issues of substance abuse, highlight issues of gender-based violence, bullying, and all of the different social challenges through play and song so that we can secure South Africa's future. We have the National Emergency Response Team, which is a 24-hour turnaround time to support um, victims of, of, of gender-based violence, but also victims of trafficking, victims of any social crime and victims of crime in general, which are constituted by trained trauma counselors who are social workers and uh, psychologists that that actually respond. Whether it's Palisa now indicating that there's a family where, where that is in distress, that news report is then goes to NERD and they respond immediately to able to assess so that a social development, we can intervene. Alisa, we have a lot of programs, we invest a lot of money. Coming to the question that you asked, just to add to what the Solidarity Fund has given to NPOs, 17 million social development will be giving to 169 NPOs in the space of gender-based violence, 50 million rand that has been allocated from the CARA funds. These monies are there to assist us to reach as many South Africans as possible. Mm -hmm. We have approved our funding policy that actually outlines how the partnership between us as social development and the non-governmental organizations, because at no point, uh, Palisa, in this lifetime will government be able to fight alone. That is why all the sectors, older persons have older persons lunch on clubs, where we can all have a pulse on the abuse on older persons. Um, we have the different campaigns from Remember Your Name, which we will be elevating. As the president said, we will speak. And I think that will shake South Africa a bit because all those that are not known will actually then be known by all of us. And we can reflect as a country to say, where is our future? And what exactly are we going to do? I'm but also for us as South uh, African women. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm listening to you, Adia, mentioning a whole lot of these programs that your department has. But the question really is, are they really working? If we're still sitting here and talking about high levels of gender-based violence in, in the country, that, that surely raises a question as to whether the programs are efficient to address the scale of gender-based violence. We change the programs all the time. Um, if you ask me, Palisa, some are working, some are not. Some are at different levels in terms of small, small scale that needs to be upscaled. But behavioral change, it's a journey. And it requires long-term investment. It's not something that you measure, that you implement on Monday, you measure on Friday. If you look at our Boys Championing Change program, it's in the next five years, whether you will ask me the question and I'll answer, is it working? And we will see that by the kind of boy, men, by the kind of young men we will have and how they will interact with women. Um, if you ask me whether the, the Men Championing Change program is working, yes. I can speak and say it is working because more and more men are beginning to say enough is enough. It is something we never used to have, Palisa. Women were the ones jumping in the streets. Women were the ones marching alone. But right. the more we are beginning to, to, to raise the issues and engage men, you've seen even today, more and more men are beginning want to come out in different forms. Your Patrick Shahis are beginning to say, I need help. I'm raising my hand. Let me give gender-based violence a face. 
otherwise it becomes something like a story that is being told in the boardroom. Okay. Um, it, it remains a women's face. So we're beginning to see the balance where men are saying, I, I, I have done wrong, I need help. But also for us as a department, we can tell you from the calls that we receive, from the support that we receive, that yes, the programs are working because more and more families are reaching out All for right. help. We All have right. the statistics. Okay, DM, that's where we'll leave it. Thank you so much for coming through. Uh, unfortunately, we've lost uh, Professor Bulelo Jassi on the line. We tried to reconnect with him, but we couldn't get through. Thank you so much for coming through. Henrietta Bokhopani Zolo is the Deputy Minister for the Department of Social Development, talking to us about a webinar that uh, the department had today with a number of stakeholders looking into the role that fathers can play in making uh, their boy children or boy child rather uh, better here in South Africa in terms of uh, 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 fighting the schedule of gender-based violence.